Well, thanks everyone for uh, showing up. Uh, I'm sorry my German isn't uh, nearly good enough to do this talk in, uh, in, in German. I'm, uh, I'm Pierre Yves, I'm CTO at Exoscale. We're uh, the, the, the Swiss cloud provider now. Uh, I'm, I'm also an open source developer. Um, worked on a, a few SaaS type applications before and um, did a fair work of uh, operations in the past. Um, the, the aim of my talk today is just to outline what it takes to, uh, to build a large infrastructure as a service provider and what types of uh, hurdles you'll, you'll deal with. Um, so our, our service proposition is that we're simple, we try to take complex uh, uh, concepts and uh, dilute them in a simple way uh, and we try to be compatible with automation tools and and we're from and hosted in Switzerland, uh, which is a which is a nice aspect for uh, for many companies, Swiss uh, and beyond. Uh, but to, yeah, today I want to talk about what it takes to uh, to build um, a hosting platform uh, such as ours. Um, basically, what it takes uh, can be broken down into uh, building a service, building an infrastructure, um, building software, uh, which is. Uh, Often undervalued and uh, and people. In terms of service, our, the, the focus we try to apply uh, is on uh, simplicity and scalability. Um, what we want to try and do is uh, take the the complexity of uh, dealing with infrastructure out of the hands of our customers. Um, this was initially an uh, OpenStack workshop. Uh, we didn't make the choice to go with OpenStack. Uh, mostly bef because the initiative started back in uh, 2011 when it wasn't a really good fit uh, for OpenCloud. It was a bit uh, uh, messy at that time, OpenStack. I think, right, I'm moving too much. I think right now um, OpenStack and CloudStack are a bit on par in terms of uh, functionality, scalability. Um, there are a few aspects that are better in OpenStack, there are a few aspects that are better in CloudStack, and maybe you can talk about this afterwards. Uh, and, and share ideas. Um, we went for basic networking, and I'll, I'll um, uh, cover this in a, in a while. We, we dedicated our uh, storage locally uh, on the hypervisors uh, to improve uh, persistence and, uh, and I.O. And um, our hypervisor is strongly um, based on the smart OS design. So, Initially, we made the, the choice to go with the cloud stack mostly because of its uh, extensibility. Uh, when you're uh, building a platform such as ourselves, you're going to want to extend your cloud controller. Um, <coughs> the cloud stack provides great interaction points to uh, um, it's, it's a Java based project, which means you can extend it in, in Java but, but in other languages. Uh, we, we use Clojure mostly uh, to work with, uh, with cloud stack, and, and it allows us to plug in our uh, specific add ons into it rather easily. Um, in terms of networking, we wanted to keep things simple and provide what we expect from, a, from an open cloud. So when you launch a machine, you get a public IP um, and you manage your security through security groups, uh, which instrument the firewalls, uh, which, which are on the hypervisors. Uh, and all of this, of course, is exposed by an API that lets you either work through our console or through your favorite uh, automation tools, such as BigRings. Yeah, and we did the, at the time, a bit controversial uh, choice of uh, going for uh, local storage instead of a uh, network detached uh, block storage. Uh, what this provides us is um, uh, disk durability. When you stop and restart an instance, uh, the disk is still there. You still have access to your uh, data. That also means we get really fast I.O., especially compared to uh, the other players in, the, in that field. And last, I talked a bit about the, um, the, the smart OS design. We, we went for a, um, a fully PXE boot, which means diskless hypervisor, uh, which dedicates all available storage to virtual machines. Uh, that also means that um, hypervisor upgrades on our infrastructure just mean restarting the hypervisor. Uh, very, very low amount of downtime for a hypervisor upgrades. And that's about it for the, uh, the, the service as it stands. 
But once you've done this, you, you're still not there yet. Uh, you'll need infrastructure around that service uh, to, to make sure you can operate it and, uh, and maintain it. Yeah. <coughs> and the, the four pillars uh, of the uh, infrastructure I'll talk about it are configuration management, um, the visibility uh, tool belt that you'll need to make sure your, uh, your cloud works properly, um, a build factory uh, to make sure you're able to uh, propagate changes you do in code very fast on your infrastructure, and remote execution. Uh, and what we try to apply throughout the infrastructure is uh, uh, we try to enforce a good citizen contract um, in which new machines have roles, uh, roles define the, the converged uh, configuration um, that should the configuration that should be converged on these um, on these nodes um, and an estimate of uh, the normal state uh, of a node and um, the tools to report it and make sure we're uh, <coughs> we're on track. And of course, as much I mean, as much as possible, no local intervention. We we still, we regard local intervention on machines as a failure uh, of our tool belt in general. Uh, it does happen from time to time. A few words about configuration management. Um, yeah. This is storing your configuration as code is a great way to deal with infrastructure. It, uh, what you get for free is uh, audit management, uh, a track of everything that <coughs> happened, of every change. Um, you ensure homogeneity uh, and the, the fact that you won't have hypervisors that are different from each other, uh, that you won't have web servers uh, that have a, a totally uh, different uh, host profiles, uh, and the ability to make changes really fast on your infrastructure. Uh, we chose to work with uh, Puppet, which is a pretty established uh, configuration management solution out there. Um, right now, our, our repository is over uh, 3,000 commits. Uh, we, we do changes to, uh, to our overall co configuration every day as we build new services and as we extend our, our uh, catalog of services. It, it's, been, um, it's been a good tool. It's, um, it's battlefield tested, it, it's been deployed in very large infrastructures um, for um, system administrators and uh, service reliability engineers. It's a tool that's very easy to work with uh, and that has a learning curve that's rather simple. Um, and, and the component approach that we, we've chosen uh, fits well with, uh, with Puppet. Because it let us say that a, role, a class of machines has specific components and how they interact. I'm rushing through this a little bit, but they have to fit within the uh, half hour mark. Um, a few words on uh, visibility. Um, um, what, I, what I described as visibility is tools to manage logs, uh, graphing, and, uh, and metrics, and to alert on these, uh, on these metrics. It's, it's, it's not a new field, but it's, uh, it's much more difficult uh, to have uh, a good visibility tool but as soon as you enter the distributed system world and, and building a cloud platform uh, really fits in that uh, <coughs> it really is a distributed system where uh, you have hypervisors that need coordinations uh, together. Um, we have lots of moving parts. Uh, there's a, a great amount of node volatility as well uh, in our infrastructure, node coming up and down, uh, which makes working with uh, uh, more standard uh, monitoring tools really hard. Uh, if you think about uh, an agile configuration that would have to be rebuilt every time a node comes up or down, it, it gets a bit uh, hairy to, to manage at our scale. In terms of logs, um, our approach is to ship off um, all logs within the infrastructure to a central secure uh, um, log handling mechanism. Uh, we index them in a distributed uh, search uh, system, and uh, we only we only interact with logs through um, <coughs> the Logstash tool, uh, either through a, a graphical, a web-based interface uh, called Kibana, or through uh, um, command line tools, but basically we don't go to machines to look at logs. We have a central place that gathers every logs from our infrastructure. Um, the, the, st 
this is pretty standard stuff that you, most of you might have heard of. Um, we use Elasticsearch for uh, storing the D logs, uh, Kibana to view them, and Logstash to shape them off. Uh, metrics is a less charted territory. Um, our approach is also to ship all metrics, system and application-wise, off to a central place. Um, we, we use CollectD as our um, metric collection tool, uh, which has support for a huge amount of uh, system metrics and application metrics as well. And we emit some from within applications uh, as well. Uh, we aggregate all metrics with uh, Graphite, uh, which is a, a graph display tool. And yeah, we apply that motto that uh, when, whenever we have data points that are worth knowing about, we just ship them off to Graphite, just in case we need to, uh, to have history later on. That allows us to build uh, a lot of um, dashboards and to aggregate graphs in a way that allows us to uh, pinpoint outliers in specific situations and go back in time. In terms of alerts, what we do is that we consume that, uh, that stream of log that we create and that's destined to Elasticsearch and we also consume that stream of metrics that we create with Collecti and ship off to Graphite <coughs> and we work with that data uh, to pinpoint outliers and try to and try to work um, with the windows of events that allows us to detect spikes or uh, erratic behavior. Um, the tool that we use to do this is called Riemann. Uh, it's uh, it's a tool that's specifically targeted at uh, uh, monitoring distributed systems. Uh, it, it works as a passive event collector. Uh, it just receives notifications. It doesn't have uh, a way of um, uh, going out and asking uh, machines for their behavior just listens for uh, incoming events and takes decisions uh, based on these events. And yeah, that was that was the, the overall idea of um, <coughs> of um, our visibility tool belt. Um, what this gives us is a really good way of uh, bridging that gap between map and ship and territory, making, uh, getting a better idea of how our system pr performs uh, in production. And the, the last part uh, of our approach to infrastructure is having a, a, a good build factory. Uh, a good way of uh, producing the artifacts that, that are our cloud controller. So we build, um, we have a continuous, continuous integration uh, uh, solution and, and package repositories that we build ourselves. Um, in terms of CI, we use Jenkins uh, like many people do. We have a huge amount of jobs uh, which uh, ties into our, uh, our, our Git hosting uh, and that um, that produces cloud stack, but also the critical components that we push on hypervisors, uh, and the hypervisor image itself is built within Jenkins. And once all this, and once all this is built, um, <coughs> we generate um, Debian repositories uh, that are uh, updated uh, after each job, and that allows us very fast distribution of, uh, of software uh, throughout our infrastructure. As for the, the last part, we built a simple uh, remote execution uh, uh, solution that allows us to interact with machines without uh, logging on them. Uh, it's, it's a simple pop sub based uh, solution uh, which, which has an agent that, um, that lives on each machine and um, listens for incoming uh, requests for uh, scenarios to roll out and executes them and brings us the <coughs> results. Um, the, the nice aspect of that solution is that it, it supports uh, an HTTP interface, interface with an IRC interface as well, uh, which allows us to have IRC as our uh, single point of interaction with the whole infrastructure. We manage Jenkins' job in there and uh, the deployment and uh, interaction with the infrastructure as well. I'm going way too fast, but uh, I'll try to keep on track. Um, 
one, one thing that's often overlooked when building uh, cloud platforms is software. Uh, we, we often say that uh, to build a successful platform you need to be excellent in uh, data center management and, and hardware engineering, but most people uh, um, already um, expect that from us. But you also need to be excellent in, uh, in software engineering uh, because there is a lot of software involved in, uh, in building a successful uh, service. Uh, a few things that we've built uh, over the, the life of Exoscale. Uh, well, the first thing is uh, our customer management interface where we keep track of, uh, uh, of um, tickets uh, that uh, people have, the, the way we deal um, customers and the different service levels they, they live in and um, yeah, the, the, the coupons that we hand out and uh, that you can ask me for, that generic type of stuff. Um, we built a real-time metering and building uh, <coughs> solution uh, to keep track of the usage uh, of our cloud and uh, to build people appropriately. The cloud site for this provides a lot of useful data that's easily consumed and uh, easily transformed in, uh, in usage metering. Uh, if you've ever used the, the service, we built uh, an integrated console that uh, exposes um, things from our customer management, especially uh, tickets and emails and, and coupons, but also uh, the data from, from CloudStack itself uh, and, and now for our, from our um, S3 service as well as our PaaS. A few other things that are, our, that are all open source that we built, uh, Pithos, which is an S3 compatible uh, storage, object storage solution, uh, Cyanit, which is a, a graphite alternative for uh, storing uh, craft data, uh, Fleet, which is our remote execution uh, solution, and, uh, and a lot of stuff in CollectD and Riemann uh, that we contribute to extensively as well. Uh, and as for uh, people, the, the objective that we set out for ourselves is to uh, uh, to be woken up as less as possible because uh, one of the objectives of a platform such as, our, such as ours is to operate it with as few people as possible. Uh, we're currently a seven people team uh, operating the, the platform um, and my main objective is to make sure that there is no anxiety in uh, evolving the infrastructure so having tools that ensure that, they true, that we can keep building and deploying new versions of our service uh, without being uh, afraid of breaking everything. It, so it's, a, it's a bit of the same tenets that uh, we try to apply in the service, uh, having, uh, keeping as few moving parts as possible, and each time we add a moving part, uh, make sure that it's uh, really service, uh, that it, it has a great purpose, um, and yeah, new services must be uh, uh, business related. As far as um, avoiding deploy anxiety, <laughs> uh, we, we use that visibility tool belt to give us uh, uh, a good sense of uh, uh, when things break, uh, picking it up very <coughs> fast and have the, having the ability to, uh, to iterate to, to fix errors as fast as possible. And, and that's about it. Um, if we now that uh, we've been running the, the service uh, publicly for a year, um, CloudStack uh, turned out to be a really solid foundation uh, and, it, and has been very, uh, very stable uh, for us for over a year in production. We've been through several releases. We're running a lot of um, uh, in-house extensions to it uh, to, to cater for the specific things that we do with it. Um, of course, there is a lot more involved than just installing CloudStack and, uh, and, and start having uh, paying customers uh, get on the platform. Uh, but it's, it's a valid solution to build uh, something uh, scalable on top of. And um, it's been good so far. And uh, there's a, a bit of time for it. Uh, I rushed through this, so if there's uh, specific things that uh, you want to talk about, uh, there should be time for a few questions. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you for keeping my time. That's very appreciated. So are there any questions? Um, what, where are you different from other providers or what's your specialty? So the, 
I think, I think uh, one of the, I would say two things. The first thing is the, the simplicity uh, and that uh, we try to, to ensure. Um, you, you won't find uh, too many uh, public cloud providers uh, in Europe uh, uh, targeted at uh, a very streamlined uh, solution like ours. Uh, we do have an S3 um, object store now, which is uh, rather rare in Europe as well. And, um, <coughs> And we've just launched a, a platform as a service. Um, what sets us apart, I think, is our um, a specific relation with the SaaS providers, uh, which we've, we've been working with um, extensively since we've begun. And that's, that's our specific uh, uh, target customer. And um, uh, we've been uh, very happy with the, the results uh, so far. Uh, of course, some people say that the fact that we're in Switzerland is, uh, uh, is specific. I, I don't think that's our uh, strongest selling proposition. It has advantages for people in Switzerland and some people in Europe, but uh, I would okay. say... So your main customer target are software as a service providers? Yes. Okay. May I ask the platform as a service that you launched? Yeah. Is it something that you deploy or is it something you brought yourself? No, it's something that uh, we've um, uh, partnered with a um, uh, German company to offer, uh, but it's not completely um, uh, uh, deployed and handled from our uh, Swiss infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, elicit, uh, we elected to go with that because what we wanted most was um, um, something customers would be uh, used to work with, uh, which resembled Hero Group. Okay. Um, I, we were we tried out a few solutions such as uh, OpenShift and, uh, and other um, out of the shelf pass solution. Um, in my opinion, they don't uh, pass the test of uh, uh, providing something to work with beyond the small private deployment. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of scalability, I was a bit afraid. How difficult? How difficult is it to to migrate between OpenStack versions? So, uh, uh, cloud side version, sorry. Uh, it's been relatively um, easy. There, there was um, the, so it initiated the, the, the history of cloud sec is uh, grounded in, uh, in Citrix, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they bought a company that was uh, called cloud.com. Uh, going from the cloud stack, the Citrix version to the initial open source Apache software version, uh, was a bit hairy, uh, uh, but now migrating for uh, for instance 4.0 to or to 4.3 uh, uh, releases and the upcoming 4.4 is rather straightforward. Uh, even though I'm Jurgen, I want to have a, a good pre-production infrastructure and do dry runs on the, the migration because there is always a few uh, uh, nitpicks that you have to be wary of. But I mean. Most of the stuff isn't uh, cloud stack specific, and it's, it remains, uh, in our case, KVM, uh, which does most of the work, uh, and that part is left untouched and works rather well uh, throughout the reports. So, how big is your infrastructure, personally? Yeah, um, as just like every other uh, providers, we don't uh, give exact numbers, uh, especially at this time in our lifetime, where it would make us uh, look a bit small if you compare us to AWS. Uh, but we have um, uh, two data centers in Geneva right now, opening a third one uh, near Zurich uh, this third quarter. Uh, and we've been, um, we, we have um, uh, customers in the hundreds uh, uh, that are uh, using the platform from anywhere from uh, uh, one to uh, a few hundred machines. Um, yeah, I like to ask myself. So you mentioned uh, the S3 uh, cloud storage. Yeah. Okay. Is that something that cloud stack is not writing out of the box then, or is it something you have to build? Yeah. So <coughs> there, there are a few. No. Yeah. The cloud stack doesn't provide any S3 type storage uh, out of the box. Uh, there is a few uh, open source solutions out there. Uh, React CS, which isn't uh, uh, completely open source, not all of it. Uh, all of its features, and Ceph, uh, which, ha which has a, a lot of traction in that world as well. We elicited to build it ourselves because we want to build data services on top of our uh, offering 
later on yeah. and provide an alternative to uh, solutions like Kinesis from, uh, from Amazon, which is a bit harder to do on top of Seth uh, or React. Yes. So, so we build Kethos, which is on top of Cassandra, uh, and provides uh, a screen. And, yeah, and it's free compatible with API. Are you investigating uh, using containers uh, that realization or are you, do you stick to KVM for the foreseeable future? Um, I don't think it... So, in, for our internal infrastructure, uh, we, we do run some stuff in containers mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be running... Uh, I think uh, we'll be increasingly using them uh, from our internal infrastructure, especially since we, uh, uh, we are moving a few things on Mesos, which is... Uh, a, a distributed system a hypervisor uh, which runs uh, on top of C groups, so basically on top of uh, containers. Uh, to provide service for the uh, for the customers, I wouldn't want to uh, right now uh, to uh, invest on um, on containers uh, because you won't get much in terms of performance. On top of it, most of the, the deciding factor for most customers is uh, the amount of RAM dedicated to their uh, uh, to their service. And in terms of security, bypassing the, the, the container security to uh, get back to the, the hypervisor uh, is a less well-charted territory than uh, uh, what KVM provides, uh, which would make me a bit wary right now. Okay. I think we are at the end of the first time slot. Thank you very much. Yeah.